This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Station is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Monday, November 29th, wherever and however you're connected, Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man whose favorite hymn is clearly high on the mountaintop, Jerem Jordan. Nice shirt, by the way. Uh, the de facto you. Pac-12 South champs. <laughs> now, typically, you don't like to wear the same shirt, but well, this is an I exception do. worthy of oh, it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is uh, this is awesome. So, uh, I'm very excited about it. You mentioned high on the mountaintop. That's my Joel H. Johnson wrote that that's my fourth great grandpa mm-hmm. blood relative super proud of that song amazing there's a line in there that is awesome it is a banner is unfurled which i believe we have something to do right now yeah, yes in studio b speaking of unfurling how strange this random rope is here jerem it's not random unfurl it baby what happens if i pull on this rope okay yeah okay oh, yeah. Yeah. listen Kalani Satake took the high road. <laughs> we do not. Okay? Pac-12 champs. And the messaging is very, very clear here, right? <laughs> of the white versus the outline. This is awesome. I there are a lot of there are a lot of banners oh, that we've jokingly hung. You know, when BYU beat Gonzaga in 2020, it's like, let's hang that banner. When Gonzaga lost, you know, number one team, BYU was like a NIT one and done team. Yes. Hang the banner. This is the best one we've ever had. Hang the banner, <laughs> and we did. Oh, well, let's keep this up for a long time. Of course we will. Like, yes. at least through the end of the year. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Like, this isn't just today. I think this stays here for a while. <laughs> yeah, Christmas decorations. Merry exactly. Christmas. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Here's your championship oh, show lineup man. now that the banner has been unfurled. It hath been unfurled. <laughs> We feature a lot of greatness today after another Super Saturday for BYU Sports. Back-to-back, super sensational, stupendous Saturdays. Finalized uh, an impeccable no-loss November for BYU Athletics as a whole. ESPN's Trevor Maddich joins us to discuss what BYU football pulled off, the de facto Pac-12 championship, and if BYU has any hopes now of a New Year's Six invitation Things didn't really fall into place. We'll ask him. Plus, McKaylee Moore started the scoring for BYU women's soccer and their historic Elite Eight win at Southfield. She'll join us live. Winning is fun, isn't it? Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. My dad just texted me. Love the banner. Yep, we do. Saturday was awesome. Again, women's hoops, women's soccer, men's hoops, football, all won. We'll break it all down and coming up in what's trending. Okay, here are the other headlines, including Cougars in the NFL and Zach Wilson's return as the New York Jets starting quarterback. He did so in a win at Houston, 21-14, 14-24 passing, 148 yards, an interception, and his first career rushing touchdown in the league. Kyle Van Noy had five tackles as the Red Hot Patriots beat the Tennessee Titans. Fred Warner and the 49ers continue to roll right now. They have a win over the Minnesota Vikings. Sione Takitaki had four tackles in a Cleveland Browns loss to the Baltimore Ravens. Dax Milne, although he is inactive tonight because Curtis Samuel is returning as a wide receiver, he and his Washington football team face Jerem Jordan's Seattle Seahawks at 8.15 Eastern. Maybe that's better for you emotionally if Dax Milne doesn't play. I would have loved for Dax to play. Yeah, no, no. No, I, there can be. Like, I'm used to doing this with uh, Fred. So right. it's, it's all you good. want you yeah. want that person to play. Oh well, yeah, I want him to have Seahawks a great to game win as a team. Exactly. Women's volleyball gets an 11th seed in the NCAA tournament. That's the 11th overall seed. Unlike men and women's hoops, the committee doesn't take the time to actually hey. seed everybody. Hey, my lucky number. Yeah. So just the top 16 seeds get a um, a seed. So the Cougars are the third three seed, if you will. Uh, BYU hosts Boise State Friday at 9 Eastern. Winner gets Utah or Utah Valley Saturday night. Now BYU TV, we we applied to get it. ESPN uh, is apparently going to do the game, so they're not on BYU TV this weekend which uh, we don't have the first rights to those. But you'll be able to watch those, perhaps on ESPN+. Plus. Not exactly sure, but uh, so we are done broadcast. We kind of thought we were going to get those. We I'm not. bummed. Yeah. I'm bummed about that. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like we did ourselves a disservice when ESPN came in and did the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 matches a few years ago. And disservice. They were like, this is incredible. We always need to come to the Smithfield House in a tournament scenario. So ESPN saw the goodness of the Smithfield yeah. House. Yeah, service, I think. Yeah, but... 
if if they're ESPN Plus only, that's a hard film. Yeah. But that's okay. We're here. We're here. Congratulations to Ashley Hatch, who scored 24 seconds into the match for Team USA against Australia with the senior national team. Amazing. It's her first international goal. What a way to do it. One of the fastest goals ever in the history of United States women's soccer. Uh, these two teams will meet again on Tuesday, November 30th at McDonald's Jones Stadium in Newcastle as the women's national team completes its 2021 schedule. How cool is it that Ashley Hatch, the golden boot winner in the NWSL, is now scoring goals for the senior women's national team? Then I think she said something like, uh, fetch, yeah. And Brandon Davies put up 24 points and 10 boards a game in three World Cup qualifiers over the weekend for Uganda. Some people forget he's playing for Uganda. Silverbacks with one and two in those games. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Another super sensational, stupendous Saturday. I feel like we need to get a voicer from Dick Vitale for this, right? Oh, 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 sensational. So good. It felt that way for BYU fans. And again, it punctuated a no-loss November. But let's focus on what happened on Saturday. Again, chronologically, Jerem, starting with BYU women's basketball, winning their second game against a ranked opponent in St. Uh, Petersburg, Florida, without their head coach, Lee Kamard at the helm. They get it done against West Virginia in dramatic fashion. Shayla Gonzalez, clutch free throws down the stretch, got to stop. Women's hoops is incredible. This is a really good team. They should be in the top 25 in about an hour as well. We'll see where they come in. If they're not in the top 25, that's an atrocity. They beat everybody they've played. They're 7-0 and had two ranked wins on neutral courts last week. So that's awesome. Congrats to women's hoops because they could have easily not won those games yeah. without Jeff Judkins, who tested positive for COVID, hoping Jeff's okay. But they got it done on the road. Experienced group. Lot, the top six scores are back. You always got an, an yeah. incredible team. They're going to be fun to watch this whole year. Hey, taking a split in St. Petersburg, given that the, been nice. the scenario with the coaching staff and whatnot, understandable. Hey, you beat a ranked team. You're seven and one or six and one, but they won both games. Yeah. Now we're wondering, okay, where are they going to show up in the top 25? Because most certainly they should. They have earned their yeah. way into the top 25. 100%. That'll be revealed in a little under an hour right after we get off the air. So we'll wait and see where BYU women's basketball ends up. Uh, then there was the game that you called in the Elite Eight at Southfield, which was amazing. In fact, BYU outscored what I thought they would. I thought it would be a three-to-one game. They scored four starting with McKaylee Moore, who's going to join us today. Yeah, third minute. Sounded like this. Coolahan with the build inside the box. McKaylee Moore with the shot and go! 2.44 in, and BYU breaks out for the goal. South Carolina had had two corners early and, and a couple of shots in the box, so it was like, oh, this is going to be an interesting game. It wasn't. Uh, McKaylee Moore, uh, McKaylee Coolahan, excuse me, uh, excuse me, Michaela Coulihan, broke out from the 18 all the way to the other 18 and then laid it off to Moore for the goal. It was an incredible play. And BYU was in control so much that it was boring. <laughs> it was like the margin lessened the drama. And congratulations to Jen Rock with his only unchecked box on her LinkedIn was getting to a Final Four. And now BYU plays Santa Clara Friday night. Sa- a Santa Clara team that won the Natty last year that's hosting this tournament that it split with BYU last year, that beat BYU this year, okay? Huge game. Congratulations to uh, Coulihan and Tucker. And I said this to Cassidy Smith, by the way, because this is her seventh season. She's had multiple labrum tears. Her shoulder actually popped out of place before the game. Oh, my goodness. Okay, it hadn't popped out in like a month. I said, it took COVID, and it took you being willing to overcome these injuries for you to be the goalkeeper on the one team that made the Final Four for BYU. Congratulations. Like, your journey has been incredible. Wow. Yeah. So I'm standing in line waiting to go through security protocols to get into the Coliseum. Greg Rubel is right behind me, and we're both and he's doing play by play watching the in. game. And he's like, two, oh, two, two goals already. Two goals already. So we're paying attention to 15th that. 15th minute on the second. Ben's basketball is yeah. getting underway, and then we're start trying to pay attention to what's happening between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State because it potentially impacts BYU. It was madness. It was so fun. It was so fun Great. on that Saturday. And I'm so glad that BYU did it against South Carolina because – Again, the revenge tour continues. BYU beats Virginia 
and knocks out the number one overall seed, the team that knocked them out in the spring. And then five years ago, South Carolina on their home field ended BYU's dreams in the Sweet 16. So it's nice to beat that team. Now in the College Cup in the Final Four against Santa Clara. Granted, it's at Santa Clara. Not sure how that happened. They but, posted before, and it got moved from San Jose. Well, it was supposed to be there, but it was a scheduling conflict with the MLS Which is playoffs. They're like, "Oh, we didn't realize that maybe something would happen." So BYU Real earns Lake, a road game against Santa Clara <laughs> for making the College Cup. Let's but go. Maybe it's supposed to happen. Let's go. Exercise the demons, okay? Yeah. So congratulations to BYU women's soccer. An incredible Saturday night and uh, really fun watch. It was boring for you, but it was it was it was fun. The game wasn't that dramatic. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think it was actually boring. I mean, just, just it was in the late no eight, but it was like BYU's up three, four to one. Let's yeah. go, BYU men's basketball. Well, they made things interesting against the University of Utah, but as they have so often done this season, Jerem, they rebound, they play defense, and they just start to pull away in the second half. They wear you down, yep. and I love doing this show live because when we find out brand new information, we can give it to you now. Hit it. BYU Sports Nation breaking news. And breaking now is BYU men's basketball has just moved up to number 12 in the latest AP Top 25. Wow. Gonzaga drops to three after a wild game, but a loss to Duke. BYU basketball is number 12, as is BYU football. They are the same Number in the AP polls on the football and basketball side. It's a beautiful thing. And great win up at uh, the U. This was a close game until kind of the fi- final six to eight minutes. And then BYU's, uh, you know, experience, I think, kicked in there. Um, Tijon Lucas had a tremendous game. Oh, man. Caleb Lohner had a double-double. Gavin Baxter dunked like everything. It was incredible. Um, Love seeing Gavin healthy and playing more. Oh, he's so good, right? This is the Gab we've been waiting for. So, um yeah, great win over Utah. Keeping it going. Alex Barcelo tweets, great home win. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Loner waves to the must. Bye. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it was it was another great win. And BYU took care of business up there. No cramping Yoli Childs this time, right? Like, yeah, all, BYU's Yoli fully Childs healthy. Like, all, all good. All good. And up to 12, dude. It's incredible. Wow. Now, those wins weren't, like, worthy of flying up that high. There were a lot of losses around BYU sure. that helped, you know. Miss Marie. T. John Lucas' mom told me after, uh, not the Utah game, um, but the win against I'm trying to, Texas Southern. Mm-hmm. She said, that's, that's Milwaukee T. John right there. Mm. That's, that's what we're okay. waiting for. She's like, you can expect more of that. And he delivered again in Salt Lake City. He made what? The only two threes that BYU made yeah, in the game? Wild. That's the thing, Jaron. BYU is hardly making any threes, and they're still winning games because defense decisive yes they because rebound defense and they play defense at an elite level it's what 65 and under that's what BYU's doing right it's, now it's amazing he's going to lose like if BYU keeps this up defensively he's going to lose like three games okay this Guns, team's different it, they're yes they're they're long athletic they play defense they're invested they have great experience obviously with one of the most tenured backcourts mm-hmm. in college basketball yeah They've combined for, I have to crunch the numbers again, but it's like 230-plus games that they've played in college. Okay? They, exciting. Oh, number 12, man. Let's yes. go. Uh, I saw a graphic from Fox that had, I think, 10 schools on it. It said, if, retweet if your men's and women's basketball teams are still undefeated. BYU well, is one of those 10 well, schools. It, yeah, and, and football in the top. I mean, we could, <laughs> we could squeeze it to where BYU is one of like three teams to yes. have all three or something. <laughs> and won the – Individual cross country national championships, like the only school, whatever. It would be the only school. Hey, who had a yeah. perfect November by in the, all five of these sports? Only BYU. By the way, no last November, incredible. We're ignoring one sport. Do you want to talk about it or no? Do we want to talk about it? Swim and dive. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> but in those sports, basically, we picked the ones that like we help broadcast in some way, <laughs> right? Those are undefeated, which is awesome. Yeah. It ruins no last November. Don't let Therefore, facts get in the not, way of something amazing, So Jerem. let's not talk about it. Come yes, on, exactly. Come shout, on. Out, shout out to Swim and Dive. We love you, too. Uh, man, and, and, man, you mentioned Gavin Baxter. It's just so fun. There's so many good things happening. On to BYU football, who finished out the night in dramatic fashion. Now, unlike soccer, there was some serious drama in the Coliseum against USC. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. BYU man. trailing 31-28. They come back. 
Jackson McChesney scores the go-ahead touchdown because Tyler Algier has given – he has left everything on the field. L- including like, the football. He, he's like, I can't go anywhere. He was beaten. Yeah. But respect for him. Then there's the, uh, yeah, fumble rumble by Dallin Holker. fumble <laughs> rumble. I love that. I had not heard that. That's great. The, the okay. zero carries, 22 yards. Yeah, amazing. That's one of the biggest plays of the game. I would argue the biggest play of the game. I tried to give Tyler an avenue to say that he meant to do that. I'm he didn't like, take no, it. No, you, you meant to do that just so he could pick it up and run for 22 more yards. He's like, no. That's man. like airballing uh, to your teammate <laughs> to lay it in. No. <laughs> that, was, that was a huge play. Um, you know, Caleb Hayes, incredible on that last drive. Oh. PBU, pass defended, and stopped uh, you know, on fourth down. So shout out to Drew Jensen for getting in position as well there. Jackson McChesney um, tears his list, Frank, uh, in 2020 against Navy and waits like a year and a half. Yeah basically, a year and four months, to be ready for that moment. Incredible stuff. BYU becomes the de facto Pac-12 South champions. In case you missed it, you're just joining us. We unfurled this banner. Uh-huh. Here we go. In fact, many national writers were not just saying the Pac-12 South champions. Stuart Mandel just straight up declared BYU the Pac-12 champions. Yeah, didn't even have to go to Vegas this weekend and play the game. <laughs> I love Andy Oregon. Staples, who was hearing it all night from Utah fans. After he tweeted, BYU, the real Pac-12 South champ. And then, as I mentioned, our guy Stuart Mandel. I believe BYU just won the Pac-12 championship. John Wilner, Jerem, our guy John. No, he's tipping his cap where yes. he needs to. He's yeah. owned it. Respect. He has yep. owned it. Yep. yep. Said BYU has beaten USC to complete the super sweep. 5-0 and versus the Pac-12 in football. 2-0 and versus the Pac-12 in basketball. 7-0 and overall and bragging rights for Eternity. We believe in, uh, yeah, <laughs> eternity quite a bit around here. So, yeah, wait, no loss in November. I mean, an, inc- an incredible display by BYU Athletics on Saturday. Oh, amazing. Our question of the day. What was your favorite moment from yet another super sensational, stupendous Saturday in BYU sports? Let's hear from you, BYUS, and in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At N underscore Crowley 19 says, Twitter. That was my favorite part. It was great. (laughs) It kills certain people to see BYU succeed in so many different places and ways. Also, Dallin Holker, zero carries for 22 yards. It's amazing, right? Cougar Stats (laughs) tweeting in. Don't forget, BYU owning Utah on the boards. Utah had been awesome. BYU uh, took care of business there. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, BYU goes 10-2 and two in the regular season. Oh, amazing. Incredible season. How do you win big basketball games when you're not making shots? Rebound and play defense. Rebound that basketball. Coming up, is Utah actually the stuffing? According to ESPN's graphic they played in game, we'll discuss in case you missed it. And ESPN's Trevor Maddich joins us again. How does he feel about the banner that was just unfurled in Studio B? And do the Cougars have any chance of a New Year's Six Bowl invitation? He'll outline it. This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> heat getting set for success demonstrating their drive but when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again and you as well Intermountain Healthcare official medical provider for BYU athletics I know what it's like to be overlooked to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. 
Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU basketball with Mark Pope is tomorrow night. Hang out with Greg Rubel, Coach Pope, and a player guest at 8.30 Eastern on the BYU TV app to go over the big win against Utah and a couple of important matchups coming up this week. We are live in Studio B on a championship Monday. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I am very excited to discuss the de facto Pac-12 South Championship with none other than ESPN college football insider analyst and expert Trevor Maddich for another Maddich Monday. Trevor, welcome back to the program. How do you feel about the changes to the studio and our apparel today? You know, I, I, I'm seeing you guys sporting the colors, but I'm seeing some text back there that is disturbing to me. <laughs> Pac-12 South champions. That may be true, but don't you understand there are some things that can be true that should not be spoken out loud. <laughs> BYU has to try to schedule these teams in the future, even as non-conference teams when they hit the Big 12. What are you trying to do? Ruin that relationship? They're already ruining it enough by beating them all, by wiping the floor with Pac-12 South teams, by making sure that they are superior to every Pac-12 team they played this year. That should be enough. And you guys are trying to make it worse. <laughs> Stanford Wait, and Cal. Stanford and Cal. No. <laughs> Stanford and Cal have had an issue with BYU since the 60s. Ain't no banner going to ruin that. You know what I'm saying? No. But we're, mostly kidding, but it has been fun to see sort of the Ute fan reaction at this uh, because that's the thing. Yeah. But BYU goes 5 and 0. Yeah, and and mostly well. kidding is right, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Goes and by the way, when you win, you can say it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go exactly. ahead. I'm sorry, Jeremy. I interrupted you. No, you yeah. work at no, ESPN. When you win, you I work at BYU TV. It. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, but no, believe me, this is, this is your show and I appreciate <laughs> being on it. So, uh, but the thing is, yeah, for, from a standpoint of the fans that are out there right now, the three of us are kind of representing them. All this is great. This is really, really fun. But I think Kalani Sataki and the, and the program is taking it exactly the right way. They're doing nothing but it's, uh, expressing appreciation that those Pac-12 teams would schedule them because this is a really tough non-conference schedule. Normally when you're scheduling non-conference and you're a power five team, you're trying to schedule down as far as you can go so you can stay healthy and you can get young guys a lot of experience because you hope to get up ahead by a lot. Instead, they scheduled BYU, which last year and this year has turned into a top 15 program. And that's the kind of thing that's, that's BYU's appreciative that they would do that. And so that's something that they should do. From a fan standpoint, hey, knock yourself out. Have as much fun as you want. Because if you win, you can talk. Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars, as you mentioned, take care of business for the most part against all seven Power 5 opponents. Six and one in that record. Five and oh against the Pac-12. Yet it took kind of a last man standing type performance against USC there was so much attrition, so many injuries, Trevor. What did you think of BYU enduring the Coliseum and just finding a way to win? I think this might be their best win of the season. I think Ooh. this has been maybe the best coaching job I've seen out of BYU in a long, long time because of those injuries and because the injuries stacked up over the course of the season. We've talked a lot about teams that are not in the Power Five. Typically, the best ones will have really good starting lineups and a few people in depth that are also very good, but it falls off a lot because they're not recruiting to a Power 5 schedule, and they aren't able to get those guys. And BYU has recruited well enough, but they've developed well enough that when they've had so many starters down, backups to starters down, they've still been able to make the plays that they need to make. And that's a matter of, of culture within the program. It's a matter of development of young players by the coaching staff. And it's a matter of, of situational football. And I think that's what you guys are referring to, especially at the end of this game, where BYU's defense needed two massive stops, a three and out after an interception. And then that, that terrific fourth down stop about a yard short of the line of game down in the shadow of the goal line with USC going in to possibly win the game that BYU was able to manufacture because they were in the right place at the right time, that situational football. So that's a combination of young players really stepping up, but also of coaches getting them ready and putting them in position to make plays like that. This to me, this one game is the epitome of the best 
of what college football coaches can do with young players that they didn't expect to play at the beginning of the season. Let's name names in that. Caleb Hayes was incredible on that last drive with uh, one pass breakup, one pass defended, and then the game-winning tackle with Drew Jensen right there. And then uh, you had Jackson McChesney, who tore his Liz Frank against Navy in 2020, has been the third string, had like 10 carries coming into this game. All of a sudden, he comes in, he gets 7-7, seven, seven, and then the game-winning touchdown, and that was incredible. And then uh, maybe the play of the game is Dallin Holker picking up the Tyler Algier fumble, rumbling for 22 yards. That's not technically a carry for him, but it's 22 yards, which is a weird statistical anomaly. Those three moments <laughs> really stuck out to me of, hey, next man up, we got to win. I know it's USC. They're four and six over there, but we got to make some plays here. And BYU did. It was awesome. So why did Hayes make that stop? Because he was in perfect position. He read the route correctly. He was in the right position. That's a hard catch to stop, but you can tackle him right there. And it looked to me, I've got to go back and look, but I couldn't tell by the by what I saw on the TV, but it looked to me like Hayes kind of forced that route to be a little bit shorter than the receiver wanted it to be. I want to go back and look at it from a different perspective if I can get some coaches film. But it looked like that receiver was trying to get just beyond the line to gain, and he couldn't get there. That's what it appeared to be. So either way, Hayes was in perfect position. Why was Holker in position to, to scoop that ball up and run with it? Because he was hustling. He was doing what he was supposed to do. Nobody takes a playoff on this team. Nobody. And that's one of the reasons that when there's a play that has to be made and they make it, it's because there were 40 other times when they hustled and there wasn't a play there to be made. And nobody noticed that hustle except the coaches on tape. And they praise them for it. And they grade them up for it. And then they hustle again on the 41st time. And the play is there. And then we do notice it. But really, it's all those other times when nobody notices because nothing happened. But they did the same thing. The ball just didn't bounce their way. And that, again, is good coaching of young players to put them in position. Now, it's interesting you bring up the Caleb Hayes scenario and wanting to look back at that because he told me in the post game. That was all film study. I anticipated that they were going to go to the quick slant there based on formation, and he read it the right way. So uh, I'm interested to hear you know, what you find when you review that film. As we push forward, Trevor, and look at BYU moving into the postseason at 10-2, and two, obviously things didn't go really well out of BYU's control for them to feel comfortable about a New Year's Six. But maybe Oklahoma State beats up on Baylor and the Bears with three losses – open up an opportunity for BYU as the last team in. What, if the New Year's Six is not in the cards, what non-New Year's Six bowl game do you feel like would fit BYU? Well, you're looking at Independence Bowl against Texas San Antonio, uh, which would be a really fun game. Uh, it's not financially the same kind of ballpark, but it would be a really fun game to watch because that team is is really strong. And if it turns out to be that way, then, then we can really look forward to a, a, a great send-off and a very entertaining bowl game. But when you look at the possibilities for New Year's Six, a couple things needed to happen ahead of BYU. I don't mind the BYU won by four points against USC because I think the committee, with their football experience, will understand the injuries that went on. And really, very famously, that Tyler Algier just wasn't able to go at the end of that that game-winning touchdown drive. He just couldn't do it. He couldn't even hold on to the ball. And yet, he did his best. He gave everything he had. And that shines a light on all the backups that had to play on both sides of the ball. And I think the committee will notice that. So I don't mind that part, that they didn't blow out USC. But ahead of them, some things needed to happen. One is that Michigan State needed to lose. In last week's playoff ranking, BYU at number 13, Michigan State at number 12, and they played Penn State. And that was actually a bad matchup for Michigan State because Penn State has a great passing attack. Michigan State, not a good passing defense. And so uh, I thought Penn State might pull it out, but they didn't. The Spartans won that game, so they'll stay ahead of BYU. But here's a couple things. Wisconsin lost, so they're not going to be a danger of jumping BYU from behind. Um, Texas A&M lost. They're not in danger of jumping BYU from behind. Iowa's a possibility if they win the Big Ten championship. We'll see. But Oregon sits there at number 11. They've already lost to Utah. If they lose to Utah again in the Pac-12 championship game, that's a team that BYU beat. And BYU will finish ahead of Oregon. That puts BYU theoretically up to 12 if we do this math. Baylor beat BYU. Both Baylor and BYU now have two losses. But if Oklahoma State has a convincing win over Baylor, it gives them their third loss. And that head-to-head -head doesn't come into the committee's projections until at the end of the process as a tiebreaker if they can't differentiate teams by other means. And so they may look at three-loss Baylor and two-loss BYU and disregard head-to-head -head and put BYU ahead. Now, we don't know if that will happen. We'll find out basically tomorrow. 
but we'll see how this ranking works. Also, Oklahoma, um, since they're at number 10, they just lost to Oklahoma State. That's their second loss, both of them to, to top 10 teams. BYU's second loss was not to a top 10 team, it was to Boise State, but BYU has a better win than Oklahoma does. Oklahoma, I don't think, has beaten anybody that's currently in the top 25. Right. BYU beat Utah. And so that might give the committee an opportunity to put BYU ahead of Oklahoma. So there's still some dominoes that can fall in BYU's favor to get them into the top 10. We'll just have to see how it goes. Yeah, the shakeout will be interesting. How would you define this season uh, for BYU? 10-2, and two, one of the most remarkable, uh, you know, in our opinion, uh, in BYU history, seven power fives. Like, they did it. They lined up, and they won 10 games against an incredibly difficult schedule. It is, to me, one of the most, I think remarkable is a great word, one of the most remarkable seasons in the history of this program. I mean, last year was super weird because all the Power 5 schools were taken off the schedule. They went 11-1 and with the second pick of the draft at quarterback, and it was a phenomenal season. The hard part then was to lose so many guys to the NFL, including Zach Wilson, quarterback, and replace those guys and now come into, what, they have seven Power 5 opponents this year? Yep. And they beat six of them right? They beat six of them to go 10 and two in the regular season. And when you look at that, sustaining it with all those guys gone, I mean, guys that were in training camps for the NFL and then having to replace them with younger guys is a testament to the way that they've recruited the culture to which they've recruited and the way that they develop those young players. And then to be able to sustain this kind of, of winning, not a winning streak, but this kind of winning ways with so many backups having to come in and play. And let's not forget to mention Ben Bywater at linebacker who, who had to come in for the, the best player probably on that defense. And he has done great as a freshman. He's done phenomenally well. As you know, he's made some mistakes and stuff, but he's going to be a star going forward. One of those guys who kind of gets lost in the shuffle because he's been playing for so long now when Keenan Peely went out. And so uh, I think that when you put all that stuff together and you look at 10 and 2 right now, if you were to say before the season that they would have, they would go from zero power five opponents to seven, they would lose their starting quarterback plus a bunch of other guys to the NFL. And on top of that, they would have a whole bunch of injuries and a whole bunch of young guy injuries on top of injuries. If you said 10 and two would be the final result, you they'd think you were absolutely out of your mind. And yet that's what they've accomplished. And that's why we're hanging banners in Studio B and wearing T-shirts. The T-shirts <laughs> in the mail, Trevor. We're sending one to you, man. Thanks for the time. I, oh, it's great to talk to you guys. Don't get hit by a flying burrito. <laughs> we won't. Thanks, Trevor. ESPN's Trevor Maddich on BYU Sports Nation. No flying burritos. Luckily, no food was thrown. <laughs> just just chance that the university apologized oh, for Oh, yeah. boy. Yes, they did. Or chant, I guess, for a while. Okay, coming up, McKaylee Moore had two goals in the Elite Eight. She joins us to talk about going to the Final Four for women's soccer. And will BYU men's basketball, after beating a Pac-12 team on Saturday, lose prior to playing Gonzaga? Hey, the women might not lose at all in the WCC. This is BYU Sports Nation. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today.
When we sit down to watch TV, it's a fun way to unite your family, be entertained, and to watch what's on BYU TV. Brings our family together. We all love BYU TV. If you are watching it with the family, you, you will have a good time and you can reconnect and you can bond with your family and have a better relationship with them. All of us together. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. After further review, reviews the win over USC. Watch as Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, David Nixon break down the film. AFR is available tomorrow on the BYU TV app, 7 Eastern time. He is Jeremiah I'm Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation, a banner unfurling day in Studio B. To interact with the show and get more content throughout the day, perhaps see more of our T-shirts or of that banner, follow us on social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. <laughs> People want this shirt. We, we can't sell it. I'm sorry. Uh, you know. I guess you could make your own, right? You could always make your own. Yeah, exactly. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. ESPN used a Thanksgiving graphic with Cosmo holding dishes with Pac-12 teams and uh, you know scores on it during the broadcast Saturday against USA. You were on the field. You may have, you may have caught this <laughs> later on uh, social media. Did they nail the team to food comparisons? I think they did a pretty good job. Yeah. I mean, USC had to be the Thanksgiving turkey because it was Thanksgiving week. And so I think they went with a chronological approach. They did. I would have put Utah as the turkey, though. Utah is the uh, turkey when like you look the, at like it. The yeah. Big, yeah, the big thing. As far as the best win or Washington the Washington State is the gravy. I uh, probably would have put Arizona there. Although I do value gravy, like, almost more than the turkey itself. Arizona personally. should have been the cranberries. <laughs> <laughs> the pumpkin pie is hopefully a power five team. The dish you hate yeah, the most, it. or should Utah have been the dish that you despise the most in your Thanksgiving dinner? Well, this is like most meaningful to me. Right. I'm, I'm going, with yeah. you. I'm with you. But as far as Arizona goes, like. I don't despise anything at the Thanksgiving are you table. A cranberries I'm guy? full of gratitude there. I'm not full of, of any negative emotion going into there. <laughs> Unless my kid's not eating his food, you know, and then I'm like, Tate, come on, man. <laughs> uh, this was also pointed out by at West Coast College Football, all part of an amazing Twitter night oh, because of what had happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four and five star recruits, USC 46, <laughs> BYU 3. Kalani Satake goes to L.A. and wins 35-31 over the Trojans to improve the Cougars to 10-2 on the season with three four- to five-star recruits compared I'm, to 46. I'm not even sure that's accurate. I think BYU is more than that. Maybe B they don't. Does BYU but even need four- or five-star recruits? Yes, they do if they want to uh, sustain this. What happened this year was amazing, but BYU's got to get the, the Kingsleys and those guys in here if BYU wants to go into the Big 12 with a head of steam and actually compete for a title. Well... Things look good. So far, so good. As far as uh, BYU is moving up and getting four- and five-star recruits, goodness. Signing day in uh, about three weeks, by the way. Two we, weeks from Wednesday. We will happily cover what happens there. How concerned are you with the amount of injured players in football going into the bowl game? I'm concerned primarily for the offensive line, although I thought they were pretty good against USC. I need BYU to get Harris Lachance back and... I know that James Empey's been ruled out, but they, they said maybe if it's like a late December game, that doesn't feel likely. We'd be in shape. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that just feels unlikely. But get Harris the chance back. Campbell Barrington also sat out the last few games. Like, get those guys back. And then the linebacker situation. Like, what? Just tough. No Chaz, no Peyton. Max Tooley was no awesome. Keenan. Ben yeah. Bywater is progressing for sure. Drew Jensen made some plays. He was in on that tackle with Caleb Hayes on the fourth down stop that ended the game against USC. It's BYU needs to keep what linebackers they have available healthy. So I'm concerned. Are you? Yeah. Does BYU want a New Year's Six with that crew? I, yes. You know, you know, I don't care. Like, like yes. yes. But I mean, like, it wouldn't be a, a good matchup from a we're super banged up standpoint. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jerem, as we pointed out earlier in the show, BYU football and basketball are both now ranked number 12 in their respective Amazing. AP polls. Big 12, ranked number 12. <laughs> Ooh, maybe it's the number. What do you think of that? The, the number what do I 12. Think? I love it. Yeah, well, the quorum of the 12. Yeah, we love all that, man. It's awesome. What's the best 12 involved there? Clearly, it's the Big 12 invitation. Quorum of the 12. <laughs> <laughs>
Which is more aggressive, Caleb Lohner waving goodbye to the Mus or Alex Barcella's tweet saying it was a great home win? More people are going to see the tweet, so I think the tweet. Uh, while Caleb Lohner was hilarious and I love that he waved goodbye, I think a lot of Utah fans were checked out at that point, but everybody sees the tweet. The social media stratosphere was epic and Utah fans could not help themselves but indulge to what BYU was doing on Saturday night. Caleb Lohner waved, waved goodbye to Utah two Novembers ago when he signed with Cougar. <laughs> well, I guess yes, he, he came did. later after that, but yes, Colin Chandler did. also waved goodbye to Utah, and so did Zach Wilson. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Wonderful to me. I was hoping you would go there. It's, I got you. It's a him Monday, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> BYU women's volleyball gets the number 11 overall seed in this year's NCAA women's volleyball championship scenario. Is the 11 seed fair? Probably, given the RPI, but I hate RPI. RPI stinks, man. Yeah, it's the worst. Someone care enough to develop a different metric, okay? But what you know what? I feel I really good here. about BYU's potential, yeah, to win their first two as the 11 seed, which will be broadcast on ESPN, you learned today. And then to go and take on the six seed and the three seed. BYU is yeah. good enough to beat both of those teams. BYU's better than Purdue. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, Purdue's really good. BYU's better. Yeah, I, go. I like their chances. Okay, coming up, we recap our prop picks and double downs. Were we as good as BYU was? Yeah. And <laughs> fresh off an Elite Eight historic yeah. win. She started the scoring. BYU's McKaylee Moore joins us live in Studio B to preview the College Cup. This is BYU Sports Nation. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card. Concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Come with us to a place where new beginnings and second chances have room to grow. Where past and future are present and your fondest dream is so close you can almost reach out and touch it. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 18th ranked BYU, now 12th, Yep, travels to Utah Valley. A very long trip up the road. Going to go get some Krispy Kreme and then swing over and hang out and play Utah Valley, who's 6-1, by the way. Uh, Wednesday night, we'll have countdown to tip-off, 8.30 Eastern. Uh, on BYU TV in the app. Connor Harding, Colby Lafes, and Blaze Neal. Yeah. What's up, boys? Former BYU What's guys. Up? All great guys and doing good things for Mark Connor's and Utah crushing Valley. Connor is Second leading scorer? No. Yep, he's amazing. Connor's yeah. awesome. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. It is time that we welcome in the young lady who started the scoring for BYU women's soccer on Saturday night in that Elite Eight dominant performance, 4-1 to over South Carolina. Her name is McKaylee Moore. McKaylee, congratulations first and foremost on BYU's first ever College Cup entrance. So awesome. Thank you. We're super excited, and it still doesn't even feel real a few days later. <laughs> I know, right? Um, Saturday, we knew it was going to be epic and crazy. It sold out in like three hours. Uh, South Carolina has a couple of corner kicks. The pressure's on. 
And then that breakout was incredible, the, the counter. And then once, once you get in position where uh, McKaylee hands it off to you, and then, boom, you kick it in. What's that moment like for you in yeah. front of that crowd in the Elite Eight? <laughs> Well, Kayla dribbled, like, literally the entire field. She got the <laughs> ball, like, in the other team's box, and I just saw her, like, sprinting up the field, and I'm like, oh, crap, I better get up. Got to be a support for her. And when she played the ball, I was just focused, like, good first touch and, like, get a shot on frame. And I didn't even know because I'd kind of, like, fallen over that it had gone in, but the crowd went crazy, so I, like, looked around the defender, and I was like, oh, I must have scored. <laughs> Delayed reaction. <laughs> they're, they're not going crazy for a miss, I'll tell you that. Yeah, what was that like emotionally to uh, know that the stakes are so high and you came up big with a, a huge goal to start things. It was awesome. I mean, I was super happy to be able to help out the team, and I'm, I don't think we've ever played in my five years with a crowd that big, and so it just made it so awesome. Like, people were literally sitting behind the goal on the ground, and I didn't even know that was allowed. So it was crazy, and it honestly felt like a dream. I, like, ran over to the bench to, like, celebrate with some of my – with the team and, like, some of my friends, and it was just, like, crazy. I had so much adrenaline. <laughs> Seriously. It was Understandably. Amazing. Well, speaking of adrenaline, you also pick up your first ever yellow card in the match, McKaylee. <laughs> this this is becoming an all-time memory for you. What happened on that play to get your first ever <laughs> yellow card in college? I was honestly excited. Cap off my career at Southfield with a yellow card. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably the highlight of the game for me. I thought it was a little bit soft. I was a little bit surprised I got it, but I'll take it. You ran into the goalie, and South Carolina had to get something because they didn't come away with a win. They got a yellow on you, I guess. When's the last yellow card you had? I probably had one when I was 12, and it was my <laughs> it was my only other yellow, and I did the same thing. I ran into the keeper. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I, you know, I was joking on the broadcast. I was like, McKaylee's not one to get yellows, not knowing that fact, but, geez. But I was like, she needs to be careful because if she accidentally gets another one, she'd be out for the uh, semifinal. So I'm glad you get – when you got pulled out, I was like, good. Get, you know yeah, what? Get her out of here. Save her for the, uh, for the college cup. You guys, the stars aligned here because um, many of you came back this year when you didn't have to, right? Got the extra COVID year. What was the conversation like last year after you lose to Virginia going into this year of like, hey, no, let's, let's bring it back and let's – and then you get Virginia in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, so after the Virginia game, um, I don't know if people watched, but like the first 20 minutes we dominated. We had all the shots. We had all the momentum. We hit the post. We hit the crossbar. Like, So after the game, it was pretty disappointing that we knew we could compete with those types of teams. And Santa Clara won it all, and we had lost to them and beat them last season. So it was like, hey, we're one of the top teams. And so after the game, me, Cam, and Kayla, like, we're all pretty upset. And we talked, and we're like, hey, we – like, we could really do this with this team because we only lost two players from the spring to now. And so we're like, hey, if we if we work hard over the summer and we put it together, like, we could win a national championship. And so it was – we call it our revenge tour because we had Virginia. Now we have Santa Clara. We lost to Santa Clara previously this year on a close game. So we're just – we're coming for everyone. We're, we're here to win a national championship. I love that. And so you, you had that conversation – as the leadership of the team early, what was it, May or something when the NCAA tournament was? was? Like, I'm trying to remember. April, yeah, May? It was April like or May? Beginning of May, I think. Yeah. But okay. after the yeah. game, we were kind of like, all right. Because I was kind of debating, like, oh, should I come back? Should I not? Like, yeah. I could have graduated, but it's like, oh, no. Like, we felt like we had some unfinished business here. And Kim and Kayla have been so awesome the entire season. So it's it's been a great group. I hate to even think about if you decided not to come back. We wouldn't be sitting here <laughs> discussing this. Right. You know, and your performance in the Elite Eight, which gets BYU, you know, historically the first ever College Cup entrance. And, you know, what was it like? Take us to the moment when you wrap that up and you see your coach, Jen Rockwood, who had not been to a College Cup, and you see her celebrating with so, so you her falling down. Yeah, what? <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> that was funny. Kayla tackling her and her sinking to the ground. <laughs> Jen could, thought she could hold her up, and Jen fell down, dude. Yeah. That's hilarious. Oh, I heard, and I saw. What uh, What was that moment like when, when it came to, you know, the realization, like, we're in the Final Four? I mean, I don't know if we've still, like, if it's still set in for me, but <laughs> we were super happy, especially for Jen. She's done so much for our program over the – I mean, I don't even know how long she's been here. but 27 years. 27 years. So a little bit older well, than that's I am. A, yeah, that's as <laughs> the head coach. I mean, it's more than that since she showed up here, but yeah. Yeah, so it was just super awesome. Like, hey, we can get this for Jen. Like, we knew we had the potential, but like, hey, let's put it all together so she can kind of have this super awesome, like, accolade to her amazing career here at BYU. And honestly, Jen has been awesome, and I think the seniors really realize how much effort 
she's put into this program and how much dedication and time to get us like cool Jordans or to get us, you know, the gear and make sure we're all taken care of. She's kind of like the mom of our team, make sure everyone's doing good. And so I think it was the least we could do for her is to put a good performance together and take her someplace she's never been before. Oh, man, it's amazing. Okay, Friday night, 930 Eastern. You can listen to it on BYU Radio. It'll be on an ESPN. I can't remember which one. What's it going to take to beat Santa Clara on their home field in the Final Four? In the revenge tour. <laughs> in the revenge tour. I think it'll just be a strong start. Like That's what we've really been focusing on this season is just getting off to a strong start, making sure that we come out with good defensive pressure. That's kind of how we scored in the Virginia game. Um, but, yeah, if we can put one in early, it really just changes the game for us. So, But, I mean, just keep doing what we're doing. We're, we're rolling right now, and we couldn't really ask to be in a better spot to take on Santa Clara. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. You take it back to your team. You take it to Santa Clara. They're Let's not go. just happy to be there. They're going to go win this thing. Let's oh, go. I love it. Yeah. Kaylee, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you, thanks. guys. Okay, coming up, we're wearing Jordans today for a special rise and shout-out. And our prop picks and double-down results. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. My husband and I, when we sit down to watch TV, it's a fun way to unite your family, be entertained, and to watch what's on BYU TV. I am just grateful to be surrounded by such amazing people. Friday night is movie night, so they look forward to that. And we have popcorns and ice cream. Every moment matters. Brings our family together. We all love BYU TV. I think that BYU TV, it doesn't matter what show we're watching together, we can always go there for a laugh. This is a strawberry market. It absolutely connects me and my family and my friends. I don't think I've ever turned on anything from BYU TV and not found myself smiling. If you are watching it with the family, you, you will have a good time and you can reconnect and you can bond with your family and have a better relationship with them. All of us together. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. On the latest Deep Blue podcast, I talked with BYU Senior Associate Athletic Director Liz Darger about going from aspiring Utah State walk-on volleyball player to high school basketball coach to senior woman administrator at BYU, who helped with NCAA Common Ground and is part of the group to help get BYU into the Big 12. Let's do it on the BYU Radio app or where podcasts are found. BYU Sports Station, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Now it's time for our double down and prop pick results. We'll start with double down BYU basketball at Utah. Jerem, what'd you have at number one? The BYU would out-rebound Utah. Utah was third in rebounding margin. BYU was plus 17. Plus seven, 17 plus! I said that right. The game won't be decided by single digits. BYU won by 11, so I got three points there. Make some it was a one-point game out of Vegas. Did. Make some free throws, and they did. Number one, I said BYU will have three or more first-half dunks. I actually said two. I was pressured into going to three, and they had two. <laughs> so I didn't get that point. <laughs> Number two, Alex Barcelo out 12-plus second-half points. He scored 13 in the second half, so I get one point. And then Jason said uh, Caleb Bonner had his first three in the first eight minutes. He didn't. Oh, one. Still waiting for that first one. BYU have at least three players scored 12 plus, four squared, uh, scored in 12 plus. So, updated standings I have 11. Spence, you have four, and Guest has two. Guest. Who is this Guest person? Guest. Now to the prop pick results against USC. Jaron, again, start us off with your first. Okay, uh, BYU outscore USC in how many quarters? They did in the first and second quarter. You and uh, Jason 
guess that they would do it in three. I had two, so I take a point. All right. Who will score the 20th point for BYU? <laughs> you had Jake Oldroyd. Yep. Jason had Puka Nakua. I had Tyler Algier, and it was Tyler Algier. There you go. The 20th point on a five-yard touchdown run, so point for me there. Okay, tiebreaker. Here we go. Total receiving yards for all players, last name Nakua. Jason said 136. I said 113. Spencer said 120. It was 68. Which uh, is low. Which I, mean, is, I felt like it was really low. Yeah, it was low, and uh, I was the low number, so I get it. So I take the, the win. You have to win the majority to get a, a win in this, unlike points. Sure. The other one. Price is right situation. So I have five. You have two. We tied two, Jason Brent. So with one game left, I have officially won. What is this? Prop picks? I have, I have one prop picks. Congratulations <laughs> to me. <laughs> Congratulations. I think you said you'd shave your head if you lost, right? Nope. Oh, dang it. Didn't say that. <gasps> Shoot. Our question of the day. What the was stinks? your favorite moment from another super sensational, stupendous Saturday in BYU sports? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Ames Flames on Twitter. Caleb with a C and then Caleb with a K. Mm -hmm. Caleb Loner waving to the must, which is somehow super controversial. It is. And then Caleb Hayes with a K. Clutch fourth down stop at USC in football. It was a good day to be a Cougar. C slash K Caleb. <laughs> Hashtag BYUS. That's creative. I like that. <laughs> Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Speaking of Caleb with a K, let's give yeah. him one. Yeah, he was incredible on that last drive. Uh, uh, pass breakup, pass defended, and then the fourth down stop, the tackle. Jackson McChesney, I talked about it earlier, but and the bow from Caleb Hayes, which is fantastic. Oh, that's yeah. so awesome. And I love my post game interview with him. If you didn't see that, go back and watch it. He was super emotional. Yeah. No, he's worked hard, man, for an Oregon State transfer. Jackson McChesney, amazing, um, being ready for that moment to come in as the third-string guy who'd been barely used. Um, and he comes in and he has the game-winning score. I mean, incredible moment for the former Lone Peak Knight, a bunch of those on this BYU football team, the state champs, right? Um, congrats to Jackson. That was great. I mean, the celebration in the end zone was great. You should have seen him come over to the sideline. It was wild. Yeah, he's worked hard, man. Might be the main guy next year. We'll see. And women's soccer as a whole, of course, getting into the College Cup. So awesome. And then uh, rise and shout out to our guy, Truman Jorgensen. Yeah. So this is Jan Jorgensen's son who passed away recently. Today is his funeral. Uh, Jan asked people to wear some Jordans to the funeral because Truman loved Truman Jordans. Loved so Jordans. we are wearing Jordans uh, on the show today to, because we're thinking about Truman. And uh, he was only two years old. He had a rare heart uh, issue. Uh, defect and uh, passed away last week. So we're thinking about Truman, and an incredible, an incredible weekend from from BYU sports. Uh, we hung the banner, and uh, you know everyone won in November. It's just like crazy, all, man. All the feels. It's just, all the feels. All the feels is exactly <laughs> right, man. We're just soaking in yeah. the emotion. Uh, but again, yeah, I mean, we send our love to the entire Jorgensen clan. We definitely will be wearing our Jordans and looking down at those and uh, thinking about all of you today. Our thanks to today's guests, uh, McKaylee Moore, who just came in, and Trevor Maddich of ESPN. Both were fantastic. Sorry to Dennis. We ran out of time. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Omar Morgan, nice. who I saw on the sideline on Saturday. Oh, and Tim McTire. Go Cougs, baby. <laughs>